Nick Caro, we begin with the Carlton Football Club and this could be a significant review, not just for the football department, but also their senior coach, David T. I agree with that. Um, this is a massive story that you, of course, broke in the age a few hours ago, Sam. The review, I, I gather, is being run by the incoming president, Luke Sayers, who, it must be said, has been on the board for the Bolton appointment, for the Malthouse sacking and, of course, the Teague appointment, which I think we all felt... A lot of us felt at the time was pretty rushed. Um, they went with the incumbent, with the caretaker coach, and I'm not sure how much of a process they put into place, how many other... I know they interviewed a couple of other candidates. Um, I think on Friday, Kane Liddell went, was at Payne's. And, well, let's have a listen to what Kane Liddell said to Channel 7 on Friday before this game. So David Teague will be the Carlton coach next year? Okay? Yes, absolutely we're backing David Teague. Yeah, absolutely. So, Matthew, my understanding is, and Kane, was that the plan was that a lot of assistant coaches were going to go at the end of the year. And Sam McClure has spoken about this on Footy Classified not so long ago. I think some people thought you said it, but that was wrong. Mm. There, were, there was going to be sweeping changes to the assistant coaches, um, led by names like, you know, John Barker, who's been there for many, many years now. I think everything changed for the Carlton Football Club on Sunday. And I think that it is clear now, and Sam, you've reported this in The Age, that David Teague is no longer safe. No, I, I don't think he is. I personally didn't think that he was safe at the start of the year, just with the record that he, he had and, and, and also what he was expected to do with, with this list. And that was clearly Cornsy to make finals. Um, but, you know, just on, on the CEO's comment there, Caro, I mean, firstly, what do you expect him to say? Of course, they're going to be backing in their coach. But I think ultimately what we've learnt tonight is that it's it's not going to be his decision. I mean, you know, Brad Lloyd in The Age, we also had, had quoted saying that he welcomes the review and he, he fully backs the coach. But but ultimately, Brad and, and Kane answer to the board and they're going to be the ones after this review that decide their futures. Yeah. In, in my opinion, Tara, I, I look at this team and uh, you look at it, they, they lose to the Western Bulldogs by 16 points, Brisbane by 16, Melbourne 26, West Coast 22 and Sydney 22. So if you're sitting back and, and watching this, David Teague, I don't know if he's got 10 games left to prove himself or the decision has already been made. But when a coach often loses his job, it's not a great job to be taking on. You're going from ground zero. This is a job that I reckon a lot of people would love to get a hold of. And obviously that's what David would be hoping, that he's still got at his disposal. But for whatever reason... It's either the players are selfish and I look forward to Kane speaking here about not getting the best out of themselves or David T can't get them to play the way they want to play. Where do you see it, Kane? That's their current, obviously current coaching lineup. But how do you see it? Is it on the players or is it on Teague at, at this point in time? Yeah, there's a bit of both in it and it extends right through the footy department. I'd be interested to hear from Carol and Sam whether anyone is safe. Does it extend to the high-profile fitness man in Andrew Russell with the record they've got in red time and in last quarters. But And there it is there. I mean, they're the worst team in the competition in red time. They've only won five last quarters for the year. So is anyone's job safe? I don't think it should be. From, from the coach to the CEO to the captain of this club, because what I saw on the weekend against the West Coast side that was missing five of its best ten was alarming the selfishness of this group. And I don't say that lightly, because I don't think these are bad people. They're, they're good people. But from from the, the vision that we're going to see, and in particular with Nick Newman going back with the flight of the ball, with uh, two minutes to go in the third quarter, that is a team lifting act that has the ability to change the course of the match, to change momentum. How many players went and got over to him to check on him and see if he's okay? That could have been a serious neck injury. It was clearly a concussion. You got the doctor there, you got the physio there, not one player. This is Stocker, who's done it tough, trying to find his way at AFL level. That's his first goal. Now, he's in every club, every single club in the competition, all 18 run to a player who's kicked their first goal. How many? Three, perhaps? And then you get this in play. So watch Williams here. We're going to highlight high, high, Williams and O'Neill. Ryan takes eight seconds, I counted it, to dispose of this ball. This is in their forward 50. Look, Williams looks. Am I going to go and pick him up in my defensive 50 or am I going to do my own thing? I'm on 800 grand. I'll do my own thing and I'll cost my team a goal because I don't want to defend like Melbourne are defending, like Richmond are defending. We're seeing this one. This is a younger player in Cottrell and Cripps. They don't have the ball now. West Coast have got the ball. So what are you doing, Cottrell? Are you defending? No, I'm not. I'm just in no man's land. Cripps gets one metre. Bang, gone. There's another goal. I could have shown you 10 clips, Lordo, of um, examples of that. Sorry, Karen. I just want to say then, the review and the, when we talk about 
the, 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 there's not the whole club to be looked at. But I then ask those questions. Are the players confused and yes. unsure what they're asked to yes. be doing? Or but, are these players lazy? But all that will come on to David Teague anyway because if they're confused, mm. it comes on the coaches. If they're not working hard enough, it comes on the coaches. So I think that's where David, unless things can turn around dramatically here, you know, it falls on the senior coach. Well, Richmond and Collingwood underwent massive external reviews. Quite recently, yeah. Um, in both those cases, the senior coaches survived. Famously, um, another auditing company, I think it was Ernst, Ernst & Young, Young EY, yep. was a Brendan Gale choice to investigate Richmond. Damien Hardwick kept his job. That was Craig Mitchell who did that in 2016, Caro. And we know Neil Baum came in. I think Daniel Richardson moved to work underneath or alongside Neil Baum. Richmond won a flag and, and created a dynasty. Obviously, Nathan Buckley survived the Collingwood Review, took Collingwood into a grand final soon afterwards. So this is not to say that David Teague has gone. The difference here is that I think, I don't think, I know the players were a bit confused at Richmond for that poor 2016 under Hardwick, but I, I feel that there are Carlton players who are openly criticising the coach now to other people at the footy club. I, I have to question, and I know he's your brother, but Brad Lloyd and Kane Liddell were part of this decision to appoint this coach. And, and if it does prove to be wrong, they have to wear some of that. We've already seen the president. I think he would have liked another term, Mark Lejudice. He's gone. Chris Judd, the footy director, has gone. Stephen Silvani left in a cloud of acrimony um, a year or two Tumultuous ago. Tumultuous departure. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, there's been a lot of casualties for this failed rebuild, Sam. But yep. do you think that some of these assistants could even go as soon as this week or next week? Um, uh, it's a question without notice. I... I... I don't presume to know if it's going to happen this week or in the next fortnight. Uh, if you're asking me if there are going to be the same assistants next year, the answer is no. One more question. This is happening as a Collingwood football club is engaged in a civil war and we know that Nathan Buckley isn't safe. So if Carlton are going to have a crack at Alistair Clarkson or if they're going to have a crack at Ross Lyon, they need to act more quickly. And you would say, well, who would you choose if you were... Uh, if you were a senior coach, you wanted to go to a team. Uh, I think that uh, what I'd be thinking, Caro, firstly, is I look at what Melbourne has done with Simon Goodwin. And firstly, you've got to ask the questions. Where, where does it stem from? Uh, and, and, and that's what I'd be asking first. I know you're saying you've got to act quickly. But footy, where, but footy where's, boards are less but where patient is, where than Where that. is Nathan and Alistair going at this point? I think that's where I'm not sure Carlton's at that stage. Unless you're saying they've already made the decision, I'll be really interested in terms of saying, OK, Simon Goodwin, they, Alan Richardson moved out of his role. Um, you know, Troy Chaplin kept his job. Darren Birch is in his role. It's amazing how a bit of shift in attitude and a few shifts can turn things around. I, I'm not, all I'm saying is I don't think Carlton are the basket case that other teams have been, and this can be turned around, in my opinion. It's just getting the right the, mix. And whether that David Teague yep. is that mix is, the, a, is another story. The, the problem that they've got is that if their season is over in terms of finals, which I think all four of us would, mm. would say it is, it, it's not over for what they have to sell to the rest of the players, Kane. Mm. I, I mean, it, it's unique for them in the sense that they've got their captain and arguably their best player out of contract and they've got the guy leading the Coleman medal out of contract as well. I, I mean, they, while these 11 weeks might not be important for playing finals, they're important to wanting to sign good players on long-term deals. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost the perfect storm, isn't it? I mean, Harry Mackay is the most in-demand player, I would think, along with a handful of others, one or two, that clubs would love to get their hands on. Patrick Cripps, how many times on this show have we spoken about Cripps and when is he going to sign? The club says, well, that, that was months ago. He still remains unsigned. And if you look at his winning ratio, it's about 27%. Pretty boring rocking up to the club every Monday, losing like that. And I am interested in the leadership of the club. I, I just watch Sam Walsh and people um, will, will have a crack at me for the comments that I've made about Sam Walsh, but he impresses me more and more every week and I can put my hand up and say that. Is it time to do what Wayne Carey did and lead the club as a young player or Stephen Kernahan did or what Joel Selwood do, did and get everyone on the back of him? Because he's the one that I watch that gives effort unconditionally every week. So I think everything's on the table from a change of coach to a change of captain to fitness to board, all of that. I think everything's up in the air. I'm, I'm with Kane on that. I think Cripps is a big part of the problem. So we all look at coaches, but we've also got to look at players. The players got to fall on this. You know, the players are making a lot of errors, mistakes, not working hard enough. And Cripps, 
Would you say he works defensively as hard as he could? I'd say no. A part of it's a lack of running power that he's got, lack of speed. So you don't think he should be captain? Uh, I, 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 I think that should be up for discussion. Mm. Intellectually, you're correct, but you know the coaches are the ones who always carry the game. Yeah, they do, but I'm saying when, whatever, whether Teague stays or he doesn't, I'm talking these are the, the decisions that need to be made yep. to try and turn Carlton around for next year because yep. I don't think it's that bad.